Hey folks, good morning, and look what we have here today, Suzuki's 2023 GSX-S1000 GT Plus. Whoa, that is a mouthful. This is Suzuki's latest and greatest leader class sport touring bike, and we're gonna give it a ride today. All right, folks, here it is, Suzuki's 2023 GSX-1000 GT Plus. This is an all new motorcycle from Suzuki out of Hamamatsu, Japan. It was introduced for the 2022 model year. It carries over into 2023 with no changes aside from a $300 bump in MSRP for the GT Plus. The GT Plus stands out from the non-plus GT with the addition of these color matched, painted, lockable and removable hard cases. These cases swallow just over seven gallons of cargo each. Let's show them to you. They are matched to the ignition key. I like that ignition key. So you unlock it here, lift this handle, and voila, there is a full face helmet. Yes, each bag can, can swallow a full face helmet. That is an awesome touch. To remove the bags, you simply go here to lock, and then lift this here, unlock, and then you remove the bag just like that. Super easy, super clean. You can also ride with the bags removed if you want a cleaner look. Now to put it back, it's much of the same. You do have to make sure you line up this bottom mechanism right here, this mechanism, and with that, you slide this in lock and voila, you are ready to ride. Now this 2023 GSX S1000 GT Plus is powered by Suzuki's tried and true 2005-2006 GSX-R 1000 water-cooled inline four. Now, even though the architecture is the same, many of the parts and the engine cases are all different. Suzuki has learned a lot of things over the last 20 years manufacturing that engine and there are a number of durability durability and manufacturing enhancements enhancements as is the frame the frame is also based off that 2005 2006 gsxr 1000 but it also has refinements in terms of durability and manufacturing now suzuki's positioning with this 2023 gsxs 1000 gt plus is this is a classic sport touring bike so in the modern motorcycle world sport touring bikes are kind of going away and they're being replaced with more upright adventure sport bikes that is the contemporary version of a sport touring bike well suzuki is staying true to its roots its sport bike roots by engineering a classic sport touring bike that means it's going to have lower handlebar more aggressive ergonomics compared to the modern adventure sport category but for motorcyclists that want a fun loving sport touring bike with actual touring capability this could be the bike for you all right folks enough talking about it we're going to swing a leg over this bad boy and report back to you you all right, folks, another cool feature that this GSX-S1000 GT Plus offers is Bluetooth connectivity with this MySpin Suzuki smartphone app. So with this app, you can literally connect your motorcycle, your phone, your smartphone, to your motorcycle and you can get turn by turn navigation right on the instrument display just like BMW Motorrad offers with its ride connected app. You also have the ability to do a host of other features, make phone calls. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it's neat that Suzuki is stepping up into the modern era with smartphone Bluetooth connectivity between the vehicle and the rider and his phone. Very nice, Suzuki. Good job. All right, folks, here we go. There is that GSX SGT embossed mechanical key. I love mechanical keys. I'm a happy guy right now. 
was thumb to starter this vehicle like all like most new Suzuki motorcycles have easy start assist what that means is you tap the button once and it fires the starter and the engine starts you don't have to hold the starter button it's kind of a strange feature to brag about but nevertheless this bike has it it also has low rpm assist what that means is you release the clutch lever and it gently feeds fuel into the engine to help mitigate to make the motorcycle easier to run. Sorry, I wanted to get that light. I wanted to be sitting there forever. So, low RPM assist gently feeds fuel into the engine and it helps you release the clutch and get moving without having to give the motorcycle gas. I guess it's kind of another good gimmick, but it makes more sense to me. It's a neater feature than the easy start assist because I like when you let the clutch out and you don't have to give the motorcycle gas. It just makes it easier to launch, especially especially when you're launching up a hill or incline. Now, sitting on this motorcycle, of course, we talked about how Suzuki's got its feet firmly planted in the sport bike world. So, of course, the ergonomics on this motorcycle are a little bit more aggressive than you would think compared to another sport other sport terrain bikes the foot pegs are pretty far low and pretty far back they're definitely aggressive handlebar isn't too low it's actually pretty upright for for a sport touring bike but i like it i like the rearward sweep it has i like its height i like how wide it is the only thing is the foot peg position is a little aggressive but that sure does make it good when you start eating up corners which we will show you in a little bit this vehicle is powered by suzuki's tried and true triple nine cc water cool dual overhead cam 16 valve in a line for this engine is based off the 05 and 06 gsxr 1000 of course although the architecture remains the same the actual components and hardware of the motorcycle have been remanufactured and are to a different specification i.e the part numbers are different so suzuki just didn't go back in time 18 years and pull these crate these engines out of a warehouse and put them back together they made new parts they over the over the nearly two decades they've made this and this motorcycle they found ways to improve the engineering and the durability of this motorcycle this engine benefits from ride by wire throttle so ride by wire throttle showed up on suzuki motorcycles on its gsx 1000 and gsxr 1000R for the i believe 2017 model year that's when suzuki adopted ride by wire true ride by wire throttle just kind of crazy because when you look back in the books of history suzuki was actually the first one of the first motorcycle manufacturers to offer fuel injection on their motorcycles with the 98 i think it was 98 gsx r 750. then they were the first motorcycle manufacturer to actually have adjustable power modes with i think it was the 2007 gsx r 1000. so it's kind of funny that it took them so long to adopt ride by wire throttle but the ride by wire throttle on this vehicle works really good as did the analog throttle throttle act mechanism that suzuki employed modes a b and c s d m s modes a b and c return a is the most aggressive combined throttle and throttle response and engine power map b is the intermediate throttle response and power map and c is the most mellow throttle response we want maximum propulsion so we have it an a this system also helps power the wheel speed enabled traction control system it's worth noting this vehicle doesn't employ an imu so its traction control mechanism is more rudimentary compared to the modern class of motorcycles that have imu chips inside them still 
I like this motorcycle. The, the power band of the engine is so friendly that it just makes for a real fun riding experience. You almost have inherent traction control just in your right wrist because the engine is so friendly and the throttle response is so intimate yet not overly so. Yes, turns. Oh, I love turns. Now this triple nine cc engine puts back power back via a six speed transmission and a left hand side chain final drive to the 17 inch cast aluminum wheel shot with a 190 50 series sport max road sport 2 tire from dunlop a little bit flatter po profile suzuki loves to put 190 50s on his bike if you want to make them handle a little bit quicker, put a 55 or a 60 on there, or raise the rear end, make it a little bit taller, make it a little bit more lively. But still, for a 520 pound motorcycle, you'd be amazed at how light this thing steers and how agile it is. 520 pounds, it certainly has some weight to it when you're loading and unloading it from a truck or a van. But with the wheels spinning, geez, it feels really nice. I really like the suspension on this motorcycle. It it does a good balance between compliance over bumps and delivering a nice cozy ride, yet it has really good support in the corners. 4.7 inches of travel up front and 5.1 in the back. We have spring preload, compression, and rebound adjustment atop the fork leg. Well, compression's on the bottom, but rebound and spring preload are up top. And the shock is limited to spring preload and rebound damping adjustment. I wish this shock absorber had a remote, remote style preload adjuster. That would be a really handy feature. That way you could just turn. Yes! Learn the beans! That, I could help myself, guys. Sorry. That way you could just tw twist that knob and that would raise or lower the rear end of the motorcycle. There are other motorcycles in the class that have that feature and that would be a really nice thing to have. All right, folks, this 6.5 inch color TFT, this is a big improvement for Suzuki. Suzuki's always dragged its feet with its, with its one color instrument displays. This 6.5 inch color TFT display is awesome. It's bright, it's sharp. All the information there is easy to see. Speedometer, swept style tachometer, gear position. Of course, we have a fuel gauge which keeps tabs on the capacity of the five gallon fuel tank. We've averaged, averaged right around 37 miles per gallon on this vehicle. If you stay off the throttle, you can get right around 40. But if you like to let her eat, you're going to get 36 or 37. And that's how we like to operate our vehicles. Now, this GSX S1000 GT Plus is outfitted with an electronic quick shifter that makes for fast gear exchanges when you press up on the gearbox. It also makes for instantaneous downshifts when you press down on the downshifter. No clutch needed. That boosts vehicle stability when you are entering corners. Helps keep that rear tire connected. Oh yeah, baby. Corners! Oh, I love corners! God, this bike is a hoot to ride. Love how this thing handles. Triple disc hydraulic brakes keep speed in check. We've got Brembo monoblock calipers up front and a Nissan one piston caliper out back. Brakes have good response. They're not the strongest brakes I've ever ridden on a sport bike, but they get the job done. They're actually surprisingly good for have for this bike not employing a radio master cylinder it doesn't necessarily need, need it but 
it would be nice if Suzuki fit a radio master cylinder on this vehicle. Radio master cylinders are awesome because they always push more fluid and offer enhanced front brake feel at the lever. So if this bike was mine, I'd want a radial master cylinder. Still, for not having that set up, it, the brakes work really good. Always on fixed ABS ensures that you won't lock up either the front or back wheel during aggressive braking maneuvers, but there is no cornering ABS function. For cornering ABS, you need an IMU chip, chip. That gives the vehicle positional awareness and this motorcycle doesn't employ that. God, this thing rides good over bumps for a big, heavy street bike. This thing rides really good. Oh, uh, yeah. Right around 137 ponies at the business end of that Dunlop tire. And over 60 pound-feet torque from just north of 4,000 RPM. I love that quick shifter. It just makes things so just fast and easy to, to row through the six-speed gearbox. We also have cruise control. E-electronic cruise control ensures that we are maintaining a consistent speed. Cruise control is really easy to use. You push the button here, which enables it, set it, and forget it. Of course, when you use the brake or the clutch, the system automatically disables. Other cre creature comforts include this USB style charging port. That's a nice touch. You can charge your gadgets. It's got a nice rubber bumper, which keeps dirt and water from getting in there it fits really nice other motorcycle manufacturers offer USB sockets but sometimes the cover is a little bit goofy this one works really well we can also adjust our traction control settings on the fly which is always nice we can even disable it on the fly very nice Suzuki motor Now, this wouldn't be a motorcyclist test without operating this vehicle at night after dark. And the LED head beams on this vehicle work great. They are a big improvement over the stack setup compared to the GSX-S1000 GT Plus's cousin, the GSX-S1000, which we also test rode last year, I believe. So these LED projector head beams do a much better job of throwing light on the road. Cornering headlamps would always be awesome too, especially considering this motorcycle's high level of performance on curvy roads. But for the price, we're not going to knock it too much. Now, it would be nice if this motorcycle had heated grips. That's a $450 accessory. This bike was mine. Heated grips, for sure. A taller windscreen would be nice, too. This windscreen is of fixed position. You cannot adjust the height. It would have been nice if Suzuki would have offered an adjustable height windscreen with toolless style adjustment. I love toolless style adjustment of windscreens. It doesn't have to be electronic. That's just a unnecessary gizmo, but a nice toolless lever system would be nice. To be fair, Suzuki offers an accessory windshield for $170. That's their tall windscreen. So one could opt for that. Love the clutch response on this motorcycle. Clutch is, it's got some weight to it. You it's not the heaviest clutch lever pull out there, but it's not the easiest either. But I like how it's weighted properly. There was a time, well, there was a time when clutch levers back in the old days were heavy and you needed to be a he-man to pull them. Then they got really nice for a period of time and then they got really wimpy for a period of time, maybe about eight, nine years ago. 
but some of the manufacturers have come toward a more well weighted system back to the the not old old days but the old days in the in the in the 2000s and this clutch mechanism works really well it also has a slipper function which helps maintain vehicle stability if you downshift in too low of a gear for the speed that you're traveling. I love the character of this engine. It's got a real nice growl to it. It's got a little bit of vibration, but not too much. It's kind of the good kind that makes riding motorcycles fun. Yes, this thing's just so fun to ride. We've ridden this motorcycle thousands and thousands of miles. We've done some touring on it. And this is a really nice classic sport touring motorcycle. We really like the more aggressive ergonomics in today's modern adventure sport touring world. And the, the way that Suzuki just continues to campaign a classic sport terrain bike with some of the more, more modern bells and whistles like this beautiful six and a half col inch color TFT and this USB charging port, port and the ability to fit out accessory heated grips. Now it's no surprise this motorcycle continues to be manufactured in Japan. It carries a one year manufacturer's warranty. Suzuki recommends you change the engine oil on this vehicle every 7,500 miles. So 7,500 miles between oil changes, every other oil change for an engine oil filter replacement, and valve inspection interval for each of the 16 valves is 15,000 miles, which is kind of short. You gotta remember the tuning fork brands multi-cylinder bikes are going over 26,000 miles between valve interval valve inspection so they would be nice if Suzuki could somehow elevate that mileage number but to be fair we've owned Suzuki motorcycles in the past and even though it says to check the valve clearances at 15,000 miles you could go twice that and the valves will still be within specification. That's where these Japanese made vehicles really stand out compared to non-Japanese made equipment. It's just the fit and finish and durability, especially if these bikes are made in Japan. If they're made in Japan, they are going to be built Ford tough and generally give you a very long life without having to worry about monkeying with the bike that much. Oh yeah, yes. Flutter, eat. God, this bike is so fun to ride. Well, I'm getting carried away here. Time to enable traction control. I'm sorry, cruise control. Awesome. Would we spend 14000 $99 on this bike, a $300 increase compared to the 2022 version. I would. I don't really like to see that MSRP creeping up the 2022 at $13,799. That was a much better value. I know it's only $300, bucks, but $300 bucks, $300. Bucks. But still for $14,1, this bike is a really nice value in class. I would absolutely opt for the GT Plus designation, which adds the color matched and lockable and removable bags, hard case bags for $750. The non plus version is $750 less expensive. So I'd absolutely opt for that. Those bags are awesome and for $750 bucks more, it's a no brainer to me. When I ride nowadays, I have so many gadgets and doodads that I need to use to make this tasty content for our US proven purchasing audience so I always have so many things to bring with me so I love riding with a motorcycle that actually has hard case luggage and I don't have to wear my fanny pack and bring my backpack and all my doodads it makes it just for easier for day-to-day -day 
the living. So yes, I would still spend $14,100 on this bike. It kicks butt. Engine has good power. It's got great character. It's decent on fuel. This thing handles awesome. Straight up awesome handling. Rides well over the rough stuff, yet has really good support on curvy stretch of the road. I love the looks of it. It almost looks like Team Green's offering with its edgy bodywork. Suzuki's been kind of missing the styling of some of its motorcycles recently, but this GSXS 1000 GT Plus, this thing's a looker. Well, folks, that does it for our review on Suzuki's 2023 GSX 1000 GT Plus. As always, surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of our content comes to life. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please thumbs it down if you didn't, because we love to hear from our nays naysayers. And leave us a comment. What do you think? of this GXS 1000 GT Plus bike. Would you buy it? I would. Alright folks, it's letter eat time. See you later. Yo!